The worst job on the fire ground executed perfectly by a couple of volunteers from Pennsylvania. Let's go. Heavy fire. County 227. So first thing I want to point out, first of all, this video comes from the channel called Sweet Fire. I believe the guy that is filming this is the guy that owns the channel, Sweet Fire. So I will leave a link to the original video below. Definitely check him out. He's got some good stuff on there. Next thing I want to point out, notice how fast these guys are moving. A lot of career firefighters give volunteer. I can't speak for other places in the world, but here in the States, a lot of career firefighters give a hard time to volunteers. And volunteers have a very tough job, and I don't think they get nearly enough respect. These guys are hustling, and I've watched a ton of fire videos on YouTube at this point, and these guys are moving faster than most career departments that I've seen. Now, of course, that's not everybody, but these guys are hustling the second they get off the truck. Second, this is actually exactly how I was trained. If you were trained differently, by all means, leave it in the comments below. But everybody on the truck has a role. There's obviously the driver, there's obviously the officer in the front, passenger seat like this guy was, and then there are either one or two jump guys in the back one of the jump guys, their their only job is to grab the nozzle and head straight to the front door, or around the back, wherever they're told to go, and get the nozzle to the front door right away. The other person flanks that hose out for them so that they're not sauntering around, going back and forth, pulling the nozzle, then flanking out hose, pulling the nozzle, flanking out hose. The other thing is, these cops were even helping them. That's awesome if you have that type of relationship with your, your police department that you can have the cops help out. Uh, I would probably advise if you're a newer firefighter, stay away from having uh, random civilians help out because a lot of people will want to help out and they might do too much or do something wrong. These cops, I'm sure, have seen many fires before, so they know exactly kind of what they're trying to do. But good for these guys for hustling and working hard the second they get off the truck. There's not nearly enough of that going on, especially in career departments. From all the all the, the videos and the things that I've seen, it doesn't happen nearly enough. So good, good for these guys and for the fact that they're volunteers and a lot of people give them a hard time about being volunteers. Second thing I want to point out, these guys are completely calm. There's no panicking. There's no frantic uh, running around or, or spazzing out. You see that too often with a lot of firefighters, and I, I, I'm very pro-volunteer, but sometimes with a lot of volunteer firefighters that don't have enough experience, they show up, so they start panicking and freaking out, can't get their mask on, can't get their gloves on. These guys are cool, calm, and collected and doing a good job. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is this guy is about to start doing the worst job on the fire ground, in my opinion. Being the second guy whose job is to just pull hose for the guy on the nozzle sucks. Now, obviously, if you work for a bigger department and there's more people there, but right now, I think it's only these two. Oh, it says right here, only two units with a total of four firefighters on scene. So maybe somebody else is doing a 360. The driver is out there probably catching a hydrant. So it's only these two guys to go in there and fight the fire. You got one guy on the nozzle and the other guy whose job is to pull hose and make sure it doesn't get bound up or pinched on any pinch points in this door. That job sucks. If you're new, you need to do everything you can to get on the nozzle. I remember when I first started 
Uh, one of the guys that was training me told me that if I was ever on the nozzle and I even set my helmet down for a second, he was going to kick it across the yard so he could grab the nozzle. People want to get on the nozzle for two reasons. Number one, it's definitely the best part of fighting fire is being the first in there, being the first to see the flames, put out the fire yourself. The second part is doing this sucks. If you're not a firefighter and you've never done this before, this hose is extremely heavy and it can get very cumbersome to just kind of pull around. Uh, it gets bound up constantly on these little things. Now, the other thing I want to point out here too is I think these guys did a good job. They're taking a charged line into the building. I did another video of the Syracuse Fire Department. Uh, there was an attic fire and they took an uncharged line in there and I said that that was a good thing. Chances are when you go to fire school, they're going to pound into your head to never go into a structure with a dry line. Uh, you can watch this, the Syracuse video. I'll put it up here or whatever. So if you want to, if you want to watch that too, to see what the differences were, but I think these guys did the right thing by taking the charge line in there. You'll see here in a second, they go right around the corner and go right up the stairs and there's the fire. They didn't have that far of a pull once they got into the house. Now you'll see how much of a pain it can be when this hose is charged and how heavy it is and how it gets bound up. But this guy does a phenomenal job doing what's in my opinion, the worst job on the fire ground. You get no fun on the nozzle and you just work your ass off the entire time. Again, this is great work between these two. This is good communication. Everybody's being calm. They know exactly what they're supposed to do. And this guy is working hard. If you've never had to drag hose around like this on air in your full gear in an actual fire, it's way harder than it looks like. You see him, it just kind of looks like he's pulling the hose around. And this room is relatively clean. If you've been in public safety for a while, you've I'm sure you've been in houses which are just an absolute mess. This house is relatively clean and you already see how many potential pinch points there are at the door, around the coffee table, around the around the stairs. This can be a pain. So good for this guy. This is great communication by these two when it's only those two in the building. And right now, nobody else is there or it doesn't sound like anybody else is there to come help him out. Give it a wide fog for a second. Turn on fog? Yeah. Alright. Just spray the whole damn room with it real quick. See if we can just pinpoint where it might be coming from. there's not much I can do without nobody at the door helping with the hose. You got a little bit more than go on the phone. Yeah. That's as far as I can go right now. Just keep hitting it. They're working on the hydrant. You don't have to worry about water. They're working on getting the hydrant. You don't have to worry about water. I'm getting you some 
So for most of the rest of this video, you see them, they're kind of stuck in the smoke. It's kind of hard to see. If you want, like I said, I'll put the entire link below. But I really wanted to reiterate what a good job and what an important job the second guy on the initial hand line is. This guy is working his ass off, going back to the door, coming back and checking on his guy, going back to the door, coming back and checking on his guy. He's directing him. Sometimes, especially if you're newer and you're on the nozzle, uh, you can get tunnel vision and not pay attention. He's telling him, look up, hit hit this, do this. He, let's find the seat of the fire. This guy did a phenomenal job communicating with his nozzle man and working hard to get those that hose around all those pinch points. Every time you make a turn, it's going to be a new pinch point, potentially putting a kink in the hose or just causing all sorts of problems. And it, it, it's just a pain. The other thing and the last thing I want to say is this is the importance of the necessity of being fit. If you want to become a firefighter or you're thinking about getting into the fire service, you need to be fit, not just for when you go into the academy, but throughout your career. At the end of this video, this guy says he was on air for 27 minutes. I'm impressed by that. I don't know if they were 30 or 45 minute bottles. They might have been 45 minute bottles. But still, to be on air for 30 minutes working this hard like that, that means this guy's in pretty good shape. So I can't stress to you enough the importance of being in shape either as a cadet or once you're in the fire service and if you're looking to get in shape, check out Firefighter Furnace. He is a career firefighter and he's been doing fitness and teaching people how to get bigger, stronger, faster, and more fit. I'll put the link down to Firefighter Furnace below. But if that's something that you need and something you should do, please invest in yourself and do that. So as always, I hope you found this useful and helpful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.